And when you're on stage and there's 75,000 people in the crowd just going nuts, like, what is that feeling like? You know what I mean? And like, you control the vibe too. Mm. Like, you control the whole, like, Man. controlling 75,000 people. What I'm the hell does that feel there, like? bro. Because I be trying to get the adrenaline, um, the adrenaline rush through my um, content on Instagram. <laughs> you know, some people feel it, but some people don't. The feeling is outrageous. Because once you get on that stage, it's like go time. Once you get to go from the side, they say it's go time. You see the clock right there at the bottom? It's go time. You you on the road, it's, it's go time. It's either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So once then that time, you get the butterflies. Setting up, you get the butterflies. And once you look up, flooded. Word for people. Look like little ants. Flooded. Even Lyrical Lemonade, uh, we did Lyrical Lemonade, Cole Bennett back here in Chicago, um, Summer Smash. I got with me, basically literally just, just met, I feel like I DM'd you, world famous DJ Sean. Yes sir. Right? My world brother. famous DJ Sean. So what's, is that your official, what's your official? My official name is DJ Sean. DJ Sean. Yes, that's okay. my okay. Instagram name. Okay, yes. awesome. Where'd you get into DJing? Man, um, when I was younger, actually, um, my mom had me around, you know, a couple of DJs. She used to be like just everywhere, being, you know, being friendly. You know yep. what I'm saying? Just in every event. Um, knew about DJ Ferris when I was younger. Everything. So I just been around DJs throughout my whole life, really. Yeah. No, and my first turntables I had was we didn't have turntables. Yeah. It was CD CDs. We burnt ours. Our music on CDs. Yeah, we use LimeWire brand on, on CDs. So that's how long ago, you know, I started. Yes. Yeah. And now, are you from Chicago originally? I'm from Chicago originally. Um, I left. Um, I left middle school to high school to Denver, Colorado. Came back in 2011. Okay. And from 11 to now, I've been. But. Okay. So did you graduate high school then in Colorado? Actually, I didn't graduate. Okay. <laughs> I, came I basically back. didn't graduate either. Okay, yeah. I had to come back do two extra years. Yep. Um, but I I say that was it made it off the best, cause, you know, yep. me coming back, it just made me link with the people I need to link with yep. to make me who I am, you know, right now. So growing up in Chicago, what did so what did your parents do? And then how did you get so involved like what age did you get involved in music? Um, I wanna say the age I got involved with music is younger about like Eight, nine, maybe ten. I was I, I, around that time. I was hooping as well. So okay, but music always been you know in my spirit. Yes. Um, I say about high school, I uh, just kind of ventured off five, into five. um, you know, doing parties. I actually used to pay for parties. Yep. I used to pay for parties, pay to get into parties. I'm like, oh, I could do that. I could do that. Uh, then I actually started throwing the parties out there with the promoters. Yep. So that I got to get into um th th out there when meaning Denver. From freshman year I was doing um parties, throwing my old parties from freshman year to senior year. Yeah. Home parties everywhere, every venue. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Came back here, um, they was doing party promoting as well. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Um my mom, she wasn't like the party type when she was younger. She was just uh she was in college, you know what I'm saying? We was back and forth in Ohio. She graduated from Wilberforce. Yep. Um Ohio? Colleges. Yeah, Ohio. Okay. Yep, we was in Zinn, Ohio. So my partner, he's from Ohio. He's from Youngstown, Ohio. Yeah, yeah, bro. Not too far. All right, bet. Not too far. Right there. Uh, Central State, everything right there. All right, bet. Yeah. And then what about your dad? My dad, um, he's not really, you know, yeah. in my life right now. But, yep. you know what I'm saying? Salute to him because I just linked up with him. Well, not him. Linked up with his son, you know what I'm saying, from Minnesota. Now I'm pushing him as an artist, so. Yep. Dope. Mm -hmm. Dope. So, and then coming up, in Chicago and then coming up into Colorado, what were some of, you know, your memories coming up as a kid? Like just things that you remember that either one you really loved or just in addition to that, like adversities, just shit you had to overcome as a young kid. Um, one of the, one of the things that I had to overcome was um, being told no, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know how to take no. And that's probably what the reason why I always say yes a lot to a lot, a lot of things. But, um, and another thing I learned um, while promoting, you know, you have to get, you have to have, um, I want to say the feedback or the people or the engagement, the engagement for people to interact with your event, to come to your event. 
Yeah. So I used to part. I used to really party promote. I used to do. I used to put flyers inside of people' um, doors, and it was a tall story building, at least five hundred apartments. We used to go on every door, and they made sure that we you know whoever they call. Boom! They made sure that we put a flyer in their door. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yep. It was like probably like twice. I had workers with me. Um, big old box full of flyers. I worked with me. It was like once or twice. They check. Oh, they didn't do this floor. Now we get penalized. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, all, it all comes. That's why I, you know I kind of ventured off from like promoting everything. I'm just like focusing on you know the brand right now. So. so with building and focusing on the brand now, when did it really start to take off for you? And then and then who's somebody before we get into even it taking off for you? Like who like who have you looked up to coming up in the music industry that really got you like inspired? Like you'd be watching them like yeah, I could do that shit. Um. There's a couple DJs, honestly. Um, like I said, DJ Ferris is one. Um, Sean Mack, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you had my brother on here before, uh, Intune. Okay. DJ Intune. Yep. He's a, he's a, he's a, another that I came to Chicago 2011 with. Yep. And we was actually in the same group. You know okay. what I'm saying? And as time, you know, prevailed. We still brothers, bro. Still yeah. to this day. I just seen him at the Juice World concert, everything. Yep. Another DJ is DJ Mars. It's a couple DJs, you know, a couple DJs, but just to name a few, them them a lot. And uh, K Caesar too. DJ K Caesar is another one. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He just like inspired me a lot just for the brand. You know? And then when did it start? When did you start to realize like you could make a career out of it? Like when did it really start to like give you some traction? Honestly, freshman year. I'm not gonna lie. Um, high school. High school. This yep. was in Colorado. Then that was party promoting. And then, 2011. So you're you're throwing like like because I had DJ so in tune DJ Tune Hendrix right yeah right? yeah, yeah Tune Hendrix yeah all right bet so you're saying like similar to him like you were throwing parties and then did it like like freshman did you were you able to start charging like hey look it's ten bucks to get in oh yeah man we um this is actually around the jerk days man we used to jerk and everything you know yep. we threw a um a jerk party a jerk all the little jerk teams come to the venue yep. and this is actually um um club called the Casbah. In Denver, Colorado, um, well, actually, a rural Colorado uh, called the Casbah. Um, I remember standing outside the lines, boom, it was couldn't get in. Then, you know, two years later, me and the promoter got cool. You know, we, we built our own team, and then we throwing the parties. You know, yeah. packed lines, lines. Damn. Yes, bro. So, like each part, like how consistently were you throwing parties, and like what were you making um, off these? Like I said, Casbah and. Back in the Denver days, Casbah was, um, I want to say, every weekend. So we was doing them every weekend on top of, I was 16 at that time. So yep. I was in 18 and up clubs, 21 and up clubs still DJing. So yep. I was everywhere. I was a bunch of everywhere. Yeah. bunch of everywhere. So what's the biggest event you've ever done? Biggest event? Hmm. Okay, outside of... Outside of Rolling Loud, I'm going to say, like, a Indonesia, when me and Famous Dex was out there. Huge. Damn. Huge. So you was mixing for Famous Dex? Yes. We um, we actually sold out China. <clears throat> I'm sorry. We actually sold out China, but the experience, Indonesia was dope. Yeah. That's crazy. People-wise. Yeah. That's crazy. So like, it was over seventy five thousand people in there. When you're going to different like countries and, and really just even internally, like in, in within our nation, like just different areas, what are some of the coolest places and people that you've got to? So I'm assuming Indonesia, but like when you're experiencing that shit, like what are some things that come back to to your mind? Just memories that you have of the cool places and experiences you've had. Some memories is um, how people um, be inspired by you know you and how much they intake. Yeah. From miles away. Yep. You you'll be surprised how much they love you, you know, uh, in that area. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And uh, to me and how people talk and you know, when we visited overseas and everything, bro, um we was listening to the radio. Yep. Playing every language, you know, every every city went playing their language. But you get a a song from the US, they know it. Yeah. It's crazy. It's weird. Yeah, because they can be singing it too. Like singing it. And like, I cannot sing. I can't like sing any... not one word from yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's it's dope. Crazy. It's dope, bro. So you mentioned famous decks. What are some other really cool individuals you've met through your success and just DJ and shit like that? Oh man. Lil Yachty, Lil Pump. I got a 
bunch of people. Um, the Stunt Taylor, Little Mouse, Bibby, Herb. So do you go out to like it, it Cali goes. a lot too? It goes. Because I feel like. I feel like in my mind, when I think of like these big stars that you're naming oh, yeah. right now, I'm thinking of like Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. Back and forth to LA. I haven't been recently, yeah. um, but back and forth to LA. Uh, due to me, I got a uh, you know new house and everything back in Chicago. So, Let's go. Congrats, you know, bro. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Um, but LA, yeah. Back and forth to LA, bro. That's where I met a couple people at. Yep. Uh, all the Rolling Louds. Uh, everything back to Miami and New York. We. We've been all around the louds on everything, bro. So it's like I bunch, met a bunch of people through every state. And actually, when we was on tour, I built I built those relationships with people yeah. every time we hit a state. Build a relationship. So it's like I. And when you're on stage and there's 75,000 people in the crowd just going nuts, like, what is that feeling like? You know what I mean? And like, you control the vibe too. Man. Like, you control the whole, like, Man. controlling 75,000 people. What I'm the hell does that feel that, like? bro. Because I be trying to get the adrenaline. Um, the adrenaline rush through my um, content on Instagram. <laughs> you know, some people feel it, but some people don't. The feeling is outrageous because once you get on that stage, it's like go time. Once you get to go from the side, they say it's go time. You see the clock right there at the bottom? It's go time. You you on the road? It's, it's go time. It's either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So once it's dinner time, you get the butterflies. Setting up, you get the butterflies. And once you look up, Flooded, worth of people. Look like little ants. Flooded. Even Lyrical Lemonade. Uh, we did Lyrical Lemonade. Cole Bennett back here in Chicago. Um, Summer Smash. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was that. That was that concert. Out. Did you go to that? No. I, Flooded, I, I bro. seen so many people going to because there was a bit. You so you were yes, doing bro, that. Yes, bro. Yes. That's nuts. Yes, bro. That's nuts. Flooded, bro. So when you go up there, and it's time to go up, get cut on that mic. Your first word, your first word from the ending word better be turn up time. You know yep. what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Dope. Dope. So with building up to where you're at now, what what do you have like in mind for the next five to ten years? Like I know DJ Two Hendrix, like he making music too. Do you got music you're working on? I'm gonna actually go on my uh yeah, for Spotify. Sure. You um, on Spotify? Um actually um you could download or what YouTube. I download. You can look up uh Lead the Wave album, um DJ Sean, S H O N. And what's your most favorite favorite or your most favorited piece that you do have out, like if you've came out with a song, something that's like blown up on YouTube or taking you to like what really blew you up? Um, I'm gonna speak on it because it it was a time, it was a time and it was a great time. Yeah. Uh, around the time me and uh, Dex was, uh, me and Dex was uh, dropping to mixtapes, bro. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All the drippy, uh, oh man, goddamn, everything I lined up and everything. So that was a good time because I got to put my creativity you know out to the world yes and i still get to put my creativity out to the world but that was yes. a standstill that actually put me on a platform yes yeah definitely bro it was dope what's this here um that's the album lead the wave oh okay um it's kind of like uh, and this one's on that's it's, it's everywhere i just yep. what we doing yeah. i'm about to i'm gonna connect it to this real quick i want to okay. listen in a second yeah for sure I'm like, good on this one i dropped it um two years ago around my birthday Let's go. Are you working on anything new right now? Yeah, man. Um, lead the wave. Lead two the wave is soon. what. Lead the wave two. Yes, yeah, sir. Lead the wave two coming soon. I'm trying to um, trying to push a lot of artists this year as well too. I got a platform. So called. when you're pushing pushing artists, yeah. um, is that like you creating a record label? I've always been curious because like when you watch the movies on like uh, Straight Outta Compton, you know what I mean? How like record labels take advantage of like artists and things like that. You know, and it's cool to see people come in through the music industry that try to do good by artists. Right. You know what I mean? And try to get people paid. Right. You know what I mean? I look at like, uh, I know I, I dated a girl that really liked uh, Frank Ocean, I want to say it is. And like he, Frank he like put like his own music out or something so he didn't get taken taken advantage right, of. Right, exactly. Right? So like it, because really when you think of it, like a lot of these music cats, you're coming from poverty or something like they're coming from like the from like the slums and so like as soon as they see a deal you know what i mean a sign on bonus they <laughs> sign something they try to and jump then they for it. lose everything exactly bro. you know what i mean let me see if i found the right shit. exactly that's how it is um some some artists don't understand uh the importance of artistry you know and the business aspect of and treating it like a business yeah definitely make sure definitely, i'm on bro. the right one is this it? Yeah, that's it, bro. 
Back. I'm about to turn this up. Is this a, is this your favorite song on this? Um, this is actually doing? one of my favorite songs, man. This joint called um, "What We Doing." What we doing? My brother Katie Young Cocky and uh, Kid Ken, man. Shouts out. It gives me a vibe like like famous Dex in that shit. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, bro. My brother T.Y. made it. Uh, he just got a deal and stuff. No, he worked with uh, my brother Valet. T.Y. made it. So. That's clean, bro. Yes, that's our kid that's can clean, too, bro. man. That's clean. So you're making a lead the wave two then. Yeah. And when do you expect that to drop? I'm expecting it to drop um last last album I rushed it. I'm expecting it to drop like October. October. October, yeah, man. Dope. I got a couple heavies on there too. A yes. couple heavies, man. Mainstream artists. So, you know, Big lead the wave coming. So I'm originally from Pittsburgh and I remember coming up mm. when uh I Never been, bro. Wiz Khalifa, though. That's what I want to look Man, at. love Wiz Khalifa. So I, so all these things you've done, Wiz have, has had to have been at some of like the Rolling Louds or shit like that. Yeah. Like, how is that like when you're around like some of these like big major artists, dude? Like, I know you've talked like Famous Dex, Lil Pump, Lil Yachty and shit like that. But like, you get like a, I feel like Wiz got to be you up there a, like you get a, a legend. Y, you get a white club or um, uh, Erica Badu or somebody, you know, yes. walk in front of you. Any, any, anybody whose history... It's just a good feeling because you're in the same room with him. Even if you don't speak to him, yep. it's a good feeling just because you're in the same room. And that means you're doing something good. You yes. know what I'm saying? So I always take it like that. Even if it's not a, a you know conversation, I just, you know, I'm here. Being in the music industry, I feel like it's a lot of like on the road work or like really like a night owl job too. I feel like everybody that I've met that's really crushed music, they don't like sleep normal hours. Man, I just got yelled at. I just got yelled at a couple of days ago for not coming to bed. You know. Yeah, like they don't sleep normal hours. Like it's it's like what well, we got. We okay if we don't finish nothing that night, we got to wake up to it that morning. So yep. why not try to finish enough so you can move on to the next thing? Because it's consistently work, consistently something new to do. So, yep. Yeah. So yeah. So my ex she used to tell me because she used to make music and like mix, and she said like her creativity would start like when it was like nighttime. And so she's like, and like you said, she Which would have to weird. like get it done. You know what I mean? She's like, and I don't want to wake up and do it because I'm not going to be creative again until the next yeah, night. Yeah, bro. And it's like a, a brain freeze too. Like yeah. if you just like consistently do something, like sometimes you do got to take the break, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get back to it. But it's like, if you get that zone, that one zone that you, you might, like me, while I'm editing mixtapes, anything, ah, do something different and it'll sound good. So, now I just learned something new to put in the next whatever. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it all comes you know, comes with time, bro. Now, outside of music, do you have any other passions, things that you like, yeah. find yourself that you really love doing? Basketball. Um, I love I love actually relaxing and <laughs> getting my mind right because if you end a music career yes. or a DJ or anything, you know, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot trying to, you know, going back home and, you know what I'm saying? Trying to be on the outside as well, or just, you know, just anything, anything personal and business, just anything, anything. It just all take a toll on you. So yeah. I like relaxing, getting my get my man right, and then know. I can pop back out, bro. So that's that's know. my favorite part of life. I already know. So with with then relaxing and basketball, do you have like a, a favorite player? You know what I mean? Somebody that you really love, look up to when it comes to basketball that kind of inspired you to be all in on it. Um, basketball player wise, yeah, from Chicago, Dwayne Wade. Um, this is actually when I was younger too. Used to watch him and everything. I'm talking about real Hooper, bro. I used to have scouts looking at me. Yeah. Not just no person who used to I'm um, scouts and scouts and everything. But I you know, got caught up in the party life, you know. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do it. But yeah. You like man, Dwayne Wade more than Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan too. Michael Jordan too, my right, favorite, man, yeah. but I don't think <laughs> I, to me personally. He he he's my favorite, yes. but I'm talking about current. Yes, current Dwayne Dwayne Wade is like you know. I'm one surprised of my... Dwayne Wade still plays. Yeah, man. Dog, he be bomb, and he's from Chicago. He's from Chicago. Damn, 
A lot of talent has come out of Chicago. Out of Chicago, bro. Kanye I see you got West. the Bulls on yeah, there bro. too, man. I was like, because my, yeah. my other pockets, I just had the black shirt on. So they're like, doing good this year, man. Right? So right, they they're doing it's home, nice. bro. Did did Derrick Rose? Is he still or um? I seen something like he was like. I'm not sure. He was playing something, but I'm not sure if he's playing like actually in the game. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. It's weird. Chicago, but does Chicago still have Jimmy Butler? Jimmy Butler. We still got Jimmy Butler. Damn. They are doing nice. United Center and everything. I've never been. Been out here a year. We were looking at it, and then I heard like they got some mandates and shit like that, and I wasn't just vibing with everything. Uh, yeah, so it's man. Like, it's so much. Yeah, I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't really with it. It's just too much. Too much <laughs> going on. When shit settles down and shit like that. I'll be there. I'm not from Chicago originally, so I don't got like a void or anything. So like, And I don't want to like go out if I can't go out. You know what I mean? Like, exactly, bro. So. <laughs> That's how I am, bro. If, if there's no need to go out. Yeah, Anything. if there is no need to go out, I'm not going out. I'm going to stay in this office. We're chilling, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Food. What do you where what do you what do you like to eat? Is there any dope ass restaurants that you're like, yo, oh, this man. is this is a spot people gotta go to? <laughs> Glad you asked that. Uh food, I love food. We yes. love food. We'll be going everywhere, bro. Um, especially out of the country, we'll be going everywhere. Yep. Um jerk. Is our favorite, bro. I just had jerk chicken up here. Oh man, jerk is I our favorite. I got Jam so I have a, a team of Jamaicans that that work here, and I I always come up like wagwan, my fuckers. You know what I mean? Like I, I need, need some jerk it. chicken. I need it. Yeah, we might have some left over. I was like, I I have them bring <laughs> jerk chicken. They've got this special <laughs> type of bread. I don't know. It's like a thicker bread. You know thicker, what I'm talking about? Yeah, thicker and it's soft. Yes, bro. it's like thicker but like a soft bread. It and goes right with it. Ginger beer with the sauce. They got a spicy little sauce that yeah. comes with the jerk chicken. <laughs> Finito, bro. This Finito. shit is fire. Sides Have with you it. been to Jamaica? I've been to Jamaica. We actually just came from Jamaica a few bro. months ago, bro. Bro, the experience, bro. How clear was the water? The water's extra clear, bro. Listen, we was doing and they always dancing and partying in there. I always oh, mess with them. You took, you're right. You took everything right out of my mouth. Like, uh, <laughs> well, I I'm like, dude, like you took everything out of my mouth, bro. As soon as we as soon as we got to the resort, uh, they singing and dancing. Singing and dancing. We was on the dude. raft. We was on the raft. Our raft man, um, he was uh a raft driver. I'm sorry. Yep. He was pushing the raft, dipped the well, water in the washed his face with the water. Yes. I'm um, yeah. He said yes, bro. Cleaner than the other thing. Yes. That's I so see, funny. I see, I see, I see, you know, you know, we we see everything, twigs and branches and yep. you just wash your face with that, bro? Yeah, okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, dude. That shit's nuts. So I got, uh, his name's Andre. He work up here and um, he goes to Jamaica. He's, he's like, Andre and Kamar, they're both like fresh Jamaicans. You mm. know what I mean? Like yeah, heavy bro. accent, everything like that. Andre's is a little lighter now, but like, just like, they'll show me like, pictures and videos of Jamaica and just like the culture over there. It's beautiful, bro. Crazy. And dude. the intake is how they um, treat their people. It's, it's yep. amazing, bro. Now, where's your favorite jerk restaurant then? Mm. Um, I had one. I'm not going to name it, but my first one now is Flav's. Yeah? It's called Flav's. Is that around here? It's around here. They have a location downtown and they got a location um, in a city. Okay. Well, and the suburbs as well, Orland. Okay. Um, it's called Flav's P. H L A V Z, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. You know, I'm, yep. I'm gonna send it to you too, bro. Yes, okay. Please send it to me. Fire. Yes. Fire, bro. Rolls, jerk rolls. Yes. Salmon rolls. Everything. Dude, that sounds fire. Dude. <laughs> what else you like? You like you like Jamaican? What else? Okay, yeah. Um, I like everything. Soul food. Not even yep. the name soul food. I, I we can go seafood. A yep. bunch of everything, bro. Like In if it's way. good. If it's good, I eat it. I'm going to taste it. Yes. And if it's taste, I'm going to go back for it. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> facts. So I originally grew up in Arkansas in okay, the South. Dope. So we always did like the dope. crawfish boils. Crawfish. And, you know what I mean? I'm not too big on crawfish. I wasn't like when I was a little kid because I was freaked out Maybe by it. Maybe I ate it right. I, well, I was seeing like like how the cats were eating it down there. They was eating like the head and everything. I was like, this looks gross. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, they bro. break it off and start sucking out the head and eat the yeah, tail. Bro. And I was like, that shit looks foul. And then as I got older, I was like, all right, this don't taste that bad. And and but the South dude, like growing up in the country, they were eating squirrel and frog legs. Wow. And like I grew up like in like the black country. Like if you've seen Django, like that's my yeah, my bro. black half. Like my dad and shit. Like we grew up like riding cowboys. Like, you know what I mean? Like you, everybody was like fucking like on horses and shit. And I'm like, I look back now because when my parents divorced and I, I grew up in Pittsburgh with my mom yeah. for the remainder of my childhood, like going from like that area to like a predominantly white area. And I was like, 
Was it a That's change? A, like was it was it a, a huge change. change. Okay. I was the darkest kid in my school. <laughs> And I'm the most light skinned person I ever met. You know what I mean? Like, right, what? Yeah, dude. I was a. You know what I mean? So I had to like, I had to really rough some kids up. Dude. Yeah. I was, yeah. <laughs> these kids were trying to fuck with me. Um, Definitely, bro. But yeah, no. So that that was. But I also I didn't I didn't graduate. I got expelled my sophomore year for fighting. I was always fighting because my area was was racist. You know what I mean? At the end yeah, of the day, bro. my area was just it was just simply kind of racist. You know what I mean? Like my principal saying whack ass shit like. You're never gonna be anything. You're gonna be like your dad in jail, like crazy, like things crazy you see stuff. like in the movies. Yeah, you know like, what I mean? But whoa. some teachers, you know what I mean, just definitely take it to an extreme. It isn't just because, like, you know, I was a mixed kid or this, that, and the other. I mean, I definitely brought a lot of myself. I was a badass kid. I was in the parties. <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of trouble I told the last dude I was uh, talking to because I was asking about Chicago and how aggressive it could be. I remember being 13, 14, and I, I had somehow came across a high point 45. So I was I was 13, 14. I had a 45. You know what I mean? I never I never did nothing with it, but like exactly. I got into the wrong crowd. Yeah. You know what I mean? At yeah. a young age. It happened. I know there was no man in the house. I was the man. You know what I mean? Like I definitely stopped getting spanked Vice after verse, 11. Bro. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Like I remember telling I remember telling my mom just one time she was about to spank me. And I turned back and I was like, you better not drop that pe- and she called the police. <laughs> you better not you better not drop the belt. And she like, I was so scared that night. She called the police. The police came. It was horrible, horrible dude. Well. You know what I mean? Cuz like my my mom like was around the black culture enough. You know how white kids be talking to their mom, you know what I mean? They just say anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you, Aiden. <laughs> you know, like, y'all what? get away with anything. Like, I was getting beat, dog, beat, but uh but that, that was that was hilarious. But definitely turned around. You know what I mean? Yeah, turned yeah, around. Definitely turned around. I feel like a, a little bit of like you thank God finding that balance of yeah, like not getting that's caught up in legal yeah. issue and shit like that. But like when you get punched in the face by by life, just just enough, it it kind of helps balance you out where you like yourself, you can bounce up and have a lot of success, have a lot of shit going for yes, you. Bro. Being a young black man owning a house, yes, being bro. able to travel and having your shit together. Yes, bro. And just to think about that, I don't know, you know, the back end, you know what I'm saying? Just being, you know, at them places, what, out of town or the out of the country or wherever. Yeah. You be back home. Just think about like, boom, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And just to keep elevating us, it's a good feeling, you know? Absolutely. And even when you go through like future lows, because life is just ups and downs, you know what I mean? Where you can be like, how far have you come over the last, you know what I mean, four, five, ten years? Like, and you can look back and be like, I remember when we didn't have no food or we didn't have no water. Like, I remember growing up, like the lights being off, water being off, shit like that. And uh, to now, where it's like, if I have like bad quarters in business, or I feel like we're we're not where I want to be in business, right. I can still look back and be like, well, I still run a multi million dollar business. I'm 23 years old. It's a lot it's better than what it used to be. Hey, you know we what still I mean? got time. We got time, dog. We got time, we got bro. Time. So that's actually what makes me. What you just said is what pushes me still to this day, bro. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Get up, like get up and do it, bro. You know? Absolutely. It be days I want to just. Sleep in. Yeah. But my adrenaline kick in like, oh. You got to do yeah. something. You got to at least do something. Something has to be done today. Yes. Before I go to sleep. Yes. You know? Yes. So what about movies? Do you like any movies? Movies? Is there like a top Love two movies. or three? <laughs> Love movies. Um... For me, I learn from movies. Yeah, I man. Like, I got movies that I just... I love movies. Funny movies. All type of movies. Uh, Action. Everything. The name of few. Uh, my favorite movie, bro. Everybody might say it though. Like, <laughs> I think it's funny though. I'm gonna say Booty Call. I'm gonna say Booty Call. It's with Jamie Foxx. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's funny. It's hilarious. Okay, it's with Booty Call. And yep. then I, it goes starts going to the Fridays and yes, you know everything. Yes. Bro. Have you seen all the Fridays? I've seen all the Fridays many times. Uh, I've seen all the Fridays yes, bro. many times. Many, many, many times. So I used to get pissed just over over assuming and thinking like, man, they're gonna make another one. They're gonna make another yeah. one. Yeah. Because I followed dude as he made the Fridays into. He was the same actor that played in Rush Hour. Yes, bro. Right. Yes, and bro. And I was like, this dude is way too funny not to like. Not to keep up. Keep up, yeah. but like. But I respect the hell out of him for getting his money and doing what he want to do. You and that's what, what I mean? I'm saying. Yeah, it's it comes a time where you, you know you do have to do what you have to do with the opportunity. Yeah, I'm just say that right there. You know, sometimes opportunity is not good, but yep. You know, you got to weigh the dollar because every dollar costs something. Like even when you making a dollar, you got to weigh it and be like, what am I giving up to make this dollar? Yeah. 
You know what I mean? So that's where at that point where people stop feeling that fulfillment and then they start selling their soul and then they get depressed and have millions of dollars. Exactly. Exactly. Because they sell their soul. Exactly, you know what I mean? Bro. They never measure out like, well, what am I really getting out of giving up my heart for this dollar? Right. And that's where some people know get confused at too. They don't know yeah. how to react or something like that. Yes. So, you know, that's what actually, you know, to piggyback up, bro, that's what actually brought me back, you know, to my <clears throat> my support system, you know, back home. You know, yep. sometimes you can get lost in that type of, you know, era. When I was, you know, back in LA on road and everything, you know, kinda got lost in you know what actually matters at home. Yeah. You know, so, got back home. You know, mom, everything in my ear. Mm. Yep. Got to get back to it, bro. So, yeah. So it's always good. Yes. Dope. So what's you know I know we touched on it a little bit, but like your future vision. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's what's the next five, ten years, fifteen, twenty years for you? Like what are you, what are you kind of you know uh, theorizing in your mind in regard to what is it you want to accomplish? Where you want to live? Where do you want to go? Who do you want to link up with and do what with next? Like, okay. what's that all look like? Um, five to 10-year plan. I think about this literally every day. Um, I just want to link up with the right people, right connections. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I could still live here in Chicago, uh, just, you know, on the outskirts. But I just want to be able to elevate in the right places. You know, meet the right people, get in the right rooms, talk to the right, you know what I'm saying? I don't like middlemen, so I'd rather speak to people directly. Yep. So everything, five to 10 year plan, um, label bigger, my brand bigger. Um, I have a, a platform called Spotlight Artists that I'm giving artists spotlight on, you know what I'm saying? Um, sitting down with them, giving them whole segment, speak about you know where they came from, yep. upcoming, everything, everything. So that, pa um, I'm working for that platform to be five, 10 years global. Yes. Definitely. I got a few sponsors now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's really it. I'm trying to work on it. What's the hardest adversity you've had to overcome in your life up until this point? Hmm. Repeat that question, bro. So so what, what in your life has been the hardest challenge, the hardest adversity you've had to overcome up until now? Hardest challenge. Hardest challenge is pushing myself. I ain't gonna lie, because sometimes I lose the, I lose that, you know, that mm for me, you know, yeah. to try to get up and go for it. But that's that's really the hardest thing. Other than that, you know, I'll keep, you know, people keep going. Yeah, but that's really the hardest thing for me, bro. That's been the hardest thing. Yeah, it's that's just really the hardest thing. Finding that internal desire and staying consistent. Exactly. With it. Exactly. Just keep killing it. Exactly. Because some some days, you know. I know everybody gets it. Some days everybody you just want seventy percent of the time this shit's way my mind is just way oh, worse. Yeah, cut the phone off or I get back to it in the morning or whatever. You know yep. what I'm saying? It comes those times, but that's the hardest thing, bro. Yep. Yeah. So, I guess now, kind of more of like in an open format of like, what are your thoughts on really just kind of like Chicago and the world and just how things are going right now and. Just what's your what's your what's your worldly views and Chicago views right now? Um, like I said, this is just coming from Jamaica too. Like the experience when you go everywhere around seas, across seas, different countries, it's an experience too. Uh, it just brought me back to how people love people or how people show their love for you. You know, everything in the world don't have to be. Mad, you don't have to be mad about everything, you know. There comes a time and place, there's a time and place for everything, you know what I'm saying? It's just how people treat people want Chicago to do better by, you know, stopping the gun violence, you know what I'm saying? But that comes into play by how you treat people, too. Absolutely, it comes to you know what I mean? You fuck with the wrong person, you just gonna... you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so you know, the re retaliation don't really got you know nothing to do with me, but we, we as people understand the retaliation part, but that still comes about how you treat people. Absolutely. It wouldn't be that if you treat the person, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, man, bro, growth is really what I'm about, bro. Yep. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, what up and coming events do you have? Where can people like start to sign up or look out for? Where are you going to be DJing and shit like that? Yeah. Um, got a couple of events coming up. I'll be in um, Seattle. 
Seattle, Washington. Shout out to my boy Trey. Uh, got a new club called Mint. Be out there in April. Uh, supposed to be going to Phoenix next year. I mean, not next year. Sorry, I'm sorry. Next month. Phoenix next month. Got a private event, birthday party. But other than that, bro, I'm not really like focused on events. Yeah. You know, I'm focusing on, again, the brand, and I'm focusing on this spotlight artist platform that I got because me, oh, also I do a lot of mixtapes out of Chicago. Okay. A lot of mixtapes from everybody, bro. Touch everybody, everybody from the Lil J's, Lil J meaning like from uh, the E Day Six Hundred, you know what I'm saying? From like everybody, bro. So it's like a, it's tied in to the brand as well. So I'll be, I'll be busy, bro. Yeah, I'll be busy, man. So, and then, and then with that, with the events, with everything you've got building up, and the spotlights with the artists and everything that you're building up there. How you know how is that going to capitalize into for this up and coming year with everything that it is you want to accomplish? If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, it's going to capitalize because every year there's a new artist. Yep. Every year there's a new artist. Every year. Every, every year, year. There's, there's a new dance every year. So why not get on my platform and? Show your skills or show where you've been from. Because I know you're not telling, like, every significant detail online. Oh, I've had, I, I, you know, this is what made me do, you know, the actually when, where, how, why. That's where you come to my segment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just want to, you know, put this energy and put more of it next year. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And a year after that. In between time, meet the right people. I, you know, it'll be it'll be popping in no time, bro. So another another question I always love asking people yeah. if, if they have it is what is some of the funniest or the funniest story they have of just pretty much life. I feel like there's there's some stories that I I got that are just like, man, I remember in my life like, man, I remember this one time we did this, this, that, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I okay, I'm just say this because it was recent. I we was I, on a um, plane. I think we was coming in or out of Chicago. Okay, going out. I think it was Hawaii. Me and my fiance. Yep. Flying into Hawaii. I think the plane, something with the plane, you know? I'm scared of heights personally, bro. I just went skydiving. Whoa. Okay, I look at the videos all the time. Like, we need to go skydiving so I can, you know, get over it. Listen, bro. Look, you say shh. (laughs) Oh, man, listen, bro. I jumped out. I was like, yeah, man, fuck this. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. (laughs) You got to doing like this. On the eye. we got to go back around. We have to go back around because of something. Oh, okay. I'm holding a seatbelt like praying. this. Praying and everything, man. I don't know. what. I don't care who looking at me. I'm. No, nah, it, it keep dropping. <laughs> Damn. I'm not with that. Yeah, no. I hate, like, <laughs> when it's crazy turbulence on the plane, I'm like. Yeah, no. Nah, I can't do Damn, it, man. He said yeah. skydiving. Nah, skydiving, I, I need to go so I can get. It out of me. I don't know if it gets it out of you because I did it and I was like, I'm. It's like I'm not. I'm not scared of heights, but like doing that, I was like, man, this is so dumb. These people are all so dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who gets paid to do this? This oh, is dumb. Man. How long was the drop down? Like a minute and a half, two minutes of falling. <sighs> horrible, dude. Whoa. Yeah, it was horrible. Eyes closed. No, no, I was. Whoa. I was eyes. See, yeah, my I was eyes open. Be they had to. They had the plane door open too. You flying up, ears popping. You know what I mean? All these crazy white people looking around at each other. Whoa. <laughs> like excited to jump out this plane. I'm like, what the fuck is this, dude? That's I'm what done. they do. Yes, bro. I'm done with this. Man. So I jump out that plane. That was ass. But I mean, I'm glad I did it. But it's not something that I'd be like, I'm so glad I did it. I'm going to do it again. Right. I'm not doing that shit ever again. Right. You know what I mean? I just, I just did that. Honestly, for for a girl, right? So. <laughs> luckily, luckily, we gotta fly to get to places. <laughs> yeah, bro. Because I wouldn't be on there at all. Hell no. Promise. Hell you. no. So, um, what is the next thing I wanted to ask? Movies, books, did all that. <sighs> Events hit that. I think the next thing I want to hit on is is, is we kind of, you know, wrap up is 
where can people find you? What should they look into? I know we mentioned the spotlight artist a few times, but really just more of some advertisement on on your end and things you could advertise or people you could shout out or things like that. Yeah, man. Um, I'm gonna start with my Instagram, world famous DJ Sean. Follow me on every social media platform right now. Uh, my Twitter is DJ Sean Chicago. You know what I'm saying? S H O N. For everybody that you know got it confused, S H A W N or S E A N. Yep. It's S H O N. World famous DJ Sean on Instagram. DJ Sean Chicago on Twitter. Don't have a Snapchat. Uh, my spotlight artist campaign segment is on Instagram as well. At Spotlight Artist of the Month. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, what else, man? I also got the uh, live mixtapes. Live mixtapes is actually with a company, a brand. You know, like my mixtapes. Yep. That piff and everything. Live mixtapes. I work with live mixtapes. Um, you can follow that as well. Uh, it's DJ underscore Sean. Yep. You know what I'm saying? YouTube as well. I used to drop everybody's stuff, bro. That's actually where you can find the latest spotlight artists, you know, interviews uh, at my YouTube. It's world famous DJ Sean. So. Dope. Yeah, bro. The Now, you're verified on Instagram. Yes, sir. Right? How does... How does that process work? Is this they reach out to you? Like, how does that? I've been like I said, bro. Trying um, to figure that shit out. I got an article about me and everything. I'm trying to like. How hey, the fuck hey, so many I'm... people actually actually told me or asked me, you know, how did I, you know, do it and everything? Did I pay for it or whatsoever? I'll pay for it. <laughs> you motherfuckers out there, I'll pay for it. Hit me up. <laughs> I'll be buying all man. my shit. Followers, likes. Hit me up. I'll Listen, buy the shit, <laughs> man, bro. I woke up to it. She, uh, my fiance, actually. Text me, call me the morning of. Like you actually, you you got what you've been wanting for. You got you got what you've been waiting for. I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Go to your Instagram, seen it. I'm wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Woke up to it, bro. I woke up to it, bro. Man, bro. Woke up to it, bro. That's dope as hell. Hell yeah, man. And hey, it was actually. I'm not trying to wake up to it. I'm trying to buy it. So <laughs> y'all motherfuckers hit me up. He need it now. <laughs> I need it now. He need it now. <laughs> I've been looking on Google. How can I buy this? <laughs> Man, you get actually we we gonna talk about this. Yes, you know what I'm saying we're gonna talk about this, but you get it, I woke up to it, bro. I That's woke dope. up to it, and it was actually you know a good feeling just just to know. Yes, bring so much credibility nowadays yeah, in, in bro. this world. You know what I mean? Because especially I love social media. It, it social media has made me a significant amount of money. I like to be able to just be myself and just be genuine. I feel exactly. like a lot of people get caught up in it. I really don't give a fuck. I'll be doing what I want to do exactly within within the. Uh, Legal radio, capacity yeah, that radio. I can't, yeah, yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Some people are so nuts. I, I can't do too much. I don't I even mean, care what I put yeah. on here. See, you being a DJ, you 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 have a little more freedom. You know what I mean? I'd be <laughs> wild on here. I feel like if if my company like like the the legal side really exactly. got, dove in, they might limit me more than than they know. Luckily, we don't have that many viewers yet, so <laughs> might end up like Joe Rogan. They start deleting old episodes. Man, delete everything. Yeah, like hey, we got to delete some of this shit. You was wild. Can't write you, you know was a wild boy. <laughs> So, <laughs> anything else you want to mention? On Aiden, what are we at? 45, 50 minutes? Yeah, we're like 45, 50. 45, 50 wrapped up an hour. Anything else you feel like we should hit uh, on? Things on your mind? You know what I was curious about is like the hardest part of like mixing. Because I remember my old girl like just all types of shit on the screen and like just I was like this shit looks horrible for yeah. I love music yeah you know what I mean I don't really fuck with that Frank Ocean music Frank o every every artist is talented okay Frank but, Ocean yeah yeah but I'm like not into the dark you know what I mean like, yeah I, I don't I'm more of like I like 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 maybe more of like a drill rap you know what I mean something that's like good yeah. feeling like, I, yeah, I'm more of like, I need to be like, I don't want to feel like sappy emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that typical dude. Like, don't give me my emotions. I'll fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> For real, bro. Um, but like the mixing, like, is that a lot? Like when you're, when you're making it, like, what's like, what, how many hours and shit goes into that? What are the hardest Heck details yeah, the, of all the that? The mixing is, the, the mixing is the most important part because that's what, that's what uh, the people here, the mixing. Yeah. You know, that comes before, well, actually the beat is first. And then the mixing. The words is, comes after all that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's what makes the song. See, that's so. I hear all that shit first. And like then I like when I'm lit when I fall in love with music, I fall in love with like the beat. Yeah. And stuff like that. Before and like I actually like to exactly. kind of like reference like shit that I like. Like I I like more of like a mix up, mashup. Like I found this song the other day. I'm like more of like probably like an old soul. But like this Same is here. Method Man. 
This is probably as sappy as I'll get. This girl in the back is Lauren Hill. I'm pretty sure it's her name. Yeah. She, dude, this shit is fire. Well, but like, when I hear shit like this, I could like work out to that. You know man, what you I mean? You can't be like playing this in my car. Yeah, bro, this shit go hard. Like just stuff, stuff, different stuff. Cruising like to it though, for sure. A lot of old stuff, dude. Yeah. You got a, you got. This is probably the dumbest question to ask uh, an artist, but like favorite songs, favorite artists, favorite songs. <sighs> favorite artists, maybe. Favorite artists, favorite song. Favorite songs is probably a dumb mm, question. Favorite artists. You ain't gonna hit me with a favorite song. Are we saying like current or are we saying old all school? time? All time. All time. Like current, all time. Mm, that's a good question. That's a good question. Favorite all time artist who I would just cut on? Wiz Khalifa, bro. What? Wiz? <laughs> I mean, I love Wiz Khalifa, but I remember when I when like I remember when Black and Yellow came out. I was in like fifth grade or sixth grade. Yeah, I that he just like I ain't gonna lie, he inspired me a lot, bro. Like I got a couple tattoos that it was inspired by Wiz, you know. Yes. And you know he just brought me some, so no. Wiz, I feel like two. is like the new age Snoop type. You know what I mean? He's like that. They they give me like that brother vibe. Like Snoop's an older brother. One like of them. Young, young bro. Mm -hmm. Wiz, bro. Because they brought, like, Chief into a whole, like, they, like, they, like, they evolved Chief in the world. In the world, just of, another like, different way. Like, it's a way. whole other dimension outside of the music dimension. Like, when individuals think of, like, Chief and I'm thinking about Wiz and Snoop. Exactly. Like, 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 to the extent of, like, I'm pretty sure they both only smoke their own strands. Exactly. And still be able to That's get... That's kind of inspiring. Right, like, I only bro. smoke my shit. Exactly, bro. And still be able to get your money. And get your money without any conflict or people, like, judging you or being weird. Because it's weird in this Come world. Because one of my first podcasts I did, he owned... Like, I... So, like, he... I bought into his media company. Yeah. So, his media company runs all my media. They do the podcast studio. Dope, Aiden bro. works for him. He did two years for weed. Mm. You know what I mean? So, like, mm. you wouldn't do two years in Chicago. Exactly. Right? It's recreational. It's recreational. So, like, it blows my mind that people out there are doing life sentences and time Still. for a plant. Still. So, it's so weird to me. It's, just everything. It, and it's not even weird. To me, I think it's more saddening. You know what I mean? I just get kind of sad. Like, we really got this system in place. Really? You know what I mean? This could have been figured out, you know? Years ago, or, or at least, like, rectified. Like, our... Exactly. That's one that's thing. That's what I'm saying. I, I used to, like... <laughs> luckily, no one's going to listen this far. <laughs> I used to watch I think, the Kardashians or something, like, in middle school. And, like, now, Kim Kardashian. I like how she's trying to fight the judicial system. Like, trying to, like, help people. Because both my parents were in jail. So, when my mom yeah. got out, if like fucked up everything. She couldn't get a like legit job. She did a federal time. Yeah. So she couldn't get a legit like career. So she worked mm. as an office clerk during the day. And then during the night, she worked as a hospice nurse taking care of dead people. So like my mom was never home. You know mm. what I mean? I was the mm. one that raised my little sister. So mm. it was like, but she did everything for us. You Man, know what I mean? Everything. But like she had to because our system was fucked up. Exactly. You know what I mean? And if who, right, who wouldn't do it? Right. Right. Who will step in and do it and stuff up? And then they go to question like, well, why are these kids bad? You don't, well, my, our parents aren't home because you have a fucked up system. You know what I mean? You would be bad too. <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> bro, same here. Same right? here, bro. Well, this was fire. Make sure you guys check out my man, world famous DJ Sean. Yes, sir. S-H-O-N. Yes, sir. World famous DJ Sean. We That's did like it. that. We out. Let's go.